This is about a summary of the food packaging forum's work in 2020. I will, of course, not be able to summarize or to present all the work, the, the, lot, the, the large amount of work that the FPF has done. I will highlight a few important aspects of the team's work. The work of the FPF is driven by a problem that we can describe as the high chemical complexity of many types of food packaging. This high complexity causes a lot of challenges and is one of the main drivers of what the FPF wants to do. There are around 12,000 chemicals that have been listed somehow, somewhere, I will tell you more about exactly where, uh, as ingredients, as materials that may be used to make food contact materials, FCMs, and food contact articles, FCAs, as it is all shown here in this different types of food packaging. We will use these abbreviations, FCMs and FCAs and also FCCs for food contact materials, food contact articles, and food contact chemicals, as it's also shown here in some more detail. We think this is an important or useful terminology. And you can see a food contact article is, for example, a yogurt cup, and it consists of food contact materials, FCMs, such as plastics, aluminum, in this case for the lid, coatings, adhesives, and printing inks. And then each of these materials consists or con of or contains chemicals, food contact chemicals, FCCs, metals for, in this case, aluminum, but all, all the elements and ingredients of a polymer, the plastic, uh, that can be, is of course, contains a polymer, but also residuals, monomers, also additives, but also byproducts and degradation products that are not intentionally added to the plastic. So this is how we want to call the materials, FCAs, FCMs, and FCCs. The problem caused by this high chemical complexity of, of many food packaging materials can be specified in several aspects. So one aspect is that what is known about some chemicals is that they are used in FCMs and FCAs is that they are hazardous. For example, mineral oil, aromatic hydrocarbons, or phthalates. These are substances that are carcinogens or endocrine disruptors, and we know that in these cases. And this is part of the problem. Then a next element or aspect of the problem is that FCMs, food contact materials, contain many chemicals that have not been well characterized regarding the toxicology, the toxicity. Uh, some of them have not at all been tested, others have been tested um, with, um, for some what's called endpoints for certain kinds of effects. But overall, we don't know very much about the toxicity of many compounds, many substances that are elements of food contact materials. Then the next aspect of the problem is that in addition to poorly characterized chemicals that we still somehow do know, there are also substances in FCMs that we just we don't even know because they were not added as a, a, a part of the chemical synthesis, but they are part of what's called deniers, the non-intentionally added substances. These are, for example, reaction byproducts. We know that they are there because we can see them in chemical analysis. We can see their presence. They show it up as a peak uh, in chromatograms but we don't know what their actual properties are. In some cases, we don't even know what their structure is. And then overall, we do also know that chemicals from food contact materials migrate into food. And then of course, they are also taken up by humans who eat the food and then this causes human exposure and may contribute to human health effects. So overall, we can say there's a lot of uncertainty that's associated with the human exposure to food contact chemicals and then with the health effects to which these chemicals may contribute. In many cases, we don't really know. We have just bits and pieces of the picture, but we don't see the full picture yet. And one of the main questions for the work of the FPF is how can this uncertainty be reduced? And um, as we said, this is the problem is, or the uncertainty comes from 
the high chemical complexity of many food contact materials, the first step will be to just better understand all the chemicals, better know, better evaluate and understand the chemicals that are present in food contact materials and food contact articles. And to address this question, the FPF has developed this year, finished this year, a first database. I call it a first base database because we'll see a second one in a couple of minutes. A first database of food contact chemicals. And this is the database that contains the 12,000 substances I already mentioned at the beginning of this presentation. It's called the FCCDB. And it's based on 56 publicly available sources. These are, for example, the lists where uh, chemicals are listed that are authorized for use uh, in the synthesis of food contact materials. These are also inventories compiled by the industry or lists compiled by NGOs. And as is shown in this graphic down here, we see that um, the work was first to find all of these lists and inventories and then extract the substances, they ident identify the substances and include all the different substances with their identities in this database of more than 12,000 chemicals. Then in the project, the team went on also to prioritize some of the substances, the ones where we know that they are hazardous or do have hazardous properties. They are also highlighted and highlighted um, as a priority for substitution. This work just uh, came out as also a scientific publication by Xenia Go et al. Oh, no, this should not be 2012, this should be 2021, of course, in Environment International. Importantly, this is uh, a database that includes substances that are intentionally added or intentionally used in the synthesis of food contact materials. So it is, does not include what I mentioned before as the non-intentionally um, non added substances. So there are more chemicals that may matter. So then the team, the FPF took a different approach in addition to this first database and asked the question of what is known about chemicals for which we really do have evidence that they um, come out of food contact materials. And this is a starting point of a second large project that the FCF, uh, the FPF is still running. And this is called the FCCH project, Food Contact Chemicals and Human Health. As you can see here, the project uh, includes three parts. The, the team is still working on the first part. And this first part starts from the question I, I just mentioned. What is known about chemicals uh, the, um, that are, have been demonstrated to migrate out of food contact materials or that can be extracted from food contact materials? So is there any um, uh, experimental evidence that shows which chemicals do this? And then the next question would be, or will be, for which of these chemicals is, um, is, then, is there any evidence that they are present in human tissue, that they, can, that they are visible in biomonitoring? And then the third question is, what is known about the contribution of these chemicals to human health effects? As I said, the team is still working on part one and the, the other two parts are scheduled for next year. So some more words about how this project is organized and how, how what the workflow is and what the actual work means. Uh, because this is really a tremendous effort because of the tremendous complexity. Again, we come back to this chemical complexity of food contact materials. If you want to do this in a comprehensive way, we have to find as many relevant chemicals as possible. And therefore, uh, scientifically, the, 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 the starting point is to conduct a broad and still systematic search of the literature, of the peer-reviewed scientific literature, but also of the, what's called the gray literature. So there are databases, many different databases where the literature, the scientific literature is listed, is, is cataloged. And one then has to define a search query and submit this search query to these different databases. And here on the right-hand side, you can see the elements 
of the search queries that the FPF team used here. So there is, in gray, there are the connections between different search terms. So if the first term is a general term about food or drinks or beverage, yeah, let's say I call it food items that have to be mentioned in a publication, then a search term about uh, food content material and a search term about the process, migration or extraction or contamination. And in addition, there is a fourth search term about materials, the FCMs or FCAs, polymers, um, the specific chemicals that we are looking for. And these are connected by these logical operators and, 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 and these are uh, connected by an OR. So this is how logically such a search a query is, is set up and then it is submitted to the databases and from all the databases when all the duplications have been or removed or even before that there were 12,000 hits, 12,000 potentially relevant publications that the team found as a response to this, to this um, search query. Then the next task was to uh, narrow this down to the publications that actually tell us something about our chemicals of interest. So what the team then did was it had to screen these many, many papers against or with the help of two criteria. The first was, can the chemical, the food contact chemical be identified with certainty or with at least sufficient certainty that we know what chemical we're talking about? And second, is, it, is there evidence, experimental evidence, that the chemical originates from a food contact material or food contact article by migration or extraction? And this screening, which had to be done by, by looking at the abstracts and the titles of the, of the publications, uh, by this screening, the team was able to reduce the number of publications to 1,200. And then, a more detailed analysis of these 1200 is needed to find out what, it's, what they actually offer, what they actually report on the extraction or migration of FCCs from FCMs and FCAs. And that is all, that is an ongoing process. The team is more or less in the middle of this. Um, they also developed in cooperation with a, a software developer, Frank Gwads a new tool, a software tool that helps organize all that information and the papers and uh, the data that come out of the papers. And in this process or from this process, they will or that they are obtaining now this chemical specific information about what chemical um, is re reported to migrate out of materials and they are building up a new database. And this new database is called the um, FCCDB MIGX database. And we show we see these, these different databases now here. The blue large circle is the first one that we have seen already with the 12,000 substances from the lists and inventories that are used as intentionally added substances. And this orange circle here now shows the results of the FCCH project. And these do two um, circles, of course, they, they overlap, but then there's also a fractional portion here of the orange circle that uh, is out of outside of the blue one because these are then the non-intentionally added substances that also do migrate and for which there's evidence that they do migrate. So if we take them to the two databases together, we get the green shape here, and this is now then the FCCDB 2.0, the second version of the full contact chemicals database. So this may look a bit technical and it is technical. It's a lot of hard and technical work and also <laughs> boring work, but it's important to address this problem, this um, yeah, problem and, and issue, concern of the high chemical complexity. We have to learn more about the chemicals that are present in food contact materials before we can find solutions somehow. Then at the end, I would like to highlight another activity of the app. PF uh, this year, and this was the publication of a scientific consensus statement on food contact chemicals and human health. And here on this slide, you see the, the front the cover page of this um, scientific paper. It's, it has the format of a scientific paper. It was published in the journal Environmental Health. It's open access, so you can all um, easily get it. 
but it's not a normal scientific paper, but these scientific consensus statements are papers that are not addressed towards other scientists. They are addressed towards the public, to the towards decision makers, because they are brief and they have three aspects or three elements. They summarize what's known, what the various scientists agree. They also summarize where there's uncertainty or even disagreement. And they also um, summarize where there is a need for more work or better understanding or improvements. So that's what we have here also in this statement. There's one part that shows the facts based on established scientific data and findings. So that's what we know. Second part is where we are not sure or fully sure or quite uncertain or have gaps. And the third part is options for improvement. And I would just like to highlight these areas where improvements are needed. The first one is that more types of toxic effects need to be uh, covered, need to be tested for, because many chemicals are not tested for uh, the full range of toxic effects that they may have. And particularly important here is endocrine disruption. There are many chemicals that may be endocrine disruptors, but um, this is not routinely tested for. And there's, that's a big need to, to address. The second aspect is mixture toxicity. This is something that has been discussed for many years in many areas of chemical hazard and risk assessment, not just in the context of food packaging. And in a way, the, the question is simple. <laughs> it is just how important or what, what is it? What is the situation? What is the impact if there is more than one chemical? What is the impact of many chemicals together? Scientifically, this can somehow be answered, this question, but on the regulatory side, it's still not clear how this um, situation should be uh, yeah, regulated or treated within regulation. Then the third area where some improvement is really needed and also should be possible is that for the few chemicals where we know, where we do know that they are hazardous, that they should be really eliminated from food contact materials and food contact articles. And then finally, because all of this is not, is, is complex, there is the complex chemistry, there is the complexity of all the supply chains um, that are involved in food packaging, the many stakeholders, people and groups and organizations who have different types of knowledge, it's important to organize a long-term, in a long-term effort a multi-stakeholder dialogue to discuss solutions, to identify pathways towards solutions of these very complex problems. With this, I would like to conclude and I would like to thank Birgit Goeke from the FPF team and all members of the team for their inputs and help with this presentation. And I thank you for your attention.